When it comes to love, so many of us are on a constant quest to find the right person. The right person is attractive and kind, shares just enough of our interests, gets along with our friends and family and makes us feel special. When we finally meet this person, we feel like we're supposed to just know. They're the one. It feels right. But when choosing someone potentially to spend our lives with, so many of us ignore one crucial component, money. Now, money is known to be one of the leading causes of stress when it comes to relationships. And I guess it's also because a lot of couples tend to avoid the subject. Maybe you're insecure about your own financial situation and opening up that conversation will also elicit more questions than you are willing to answer. And so, if you're like most people, it's something that's thrown under the rug until it's absolutely too late. In this video, we're going to be talking about three money conversations that you and your partner absolutely must have if your relationship is going to thrive. Keep watching. Welcome back. My name is Jessica. I'm a broadcaster. I live in Accra, Ghana. Thank you so much for watching this video. So three money conversations you and your partner absolutely must have if your relationship is going to thrive. Money is important. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You could have all the love in the world, but when you do not have the money to support yourselves, the money to be able to meet some of your basic needs, the relationship that you thought was unshakable and unbreakable can fall under some really stressful times. And if you're not careful, you would completely lose that relationship that you so wanted. And so what are the most important conversations that partners need to have amongst themselves. Number one, the this is what my money looks like conversation. Now I know it's a cause of concern when there's a bit of mistrust in the person you're dating or maybe you haven't been dating for so long so you feel like it's a subject that should be shelved until later. But if you ask me, the moment you know that you want your relationship to go to the next level and you're actually serious about this woman that's in your life, one of the conversations you need to have is the this is what my money looks like conversation. Why? Because straight away she knows exactly what to expect from you. She knows your limitations and it will cut out a lot of the stressful moments further down the line when she's making some very um, ridiculous demands of you and you know in your heart of hearts that you do not have the financial muscle to meet them. At that point in time, the strain on your relationship is going to be major if you don't find an immediate solution to the problem. Now look at it this way. If you both don't know what your financial situation is, it's going to be very difficult for you to plan your financial future. And trust me, having a financial plan is key to the success of any individual. And indeed, I believe to the success of a lot of relationships as well. Now, having this very truthful conversation doesn't mean you're going to be swapping ATM pins or going right away to start a joint account, but instead it draws the real picture of where you both stand financially as couples. So conversations like, how much you earn, how much you owe, what your personal financial plans are, what you'd like to do, how you like to spend your money, what you're willing to spend on, et cetera, et cetera, are very important conversations to have. In terms of how early you can have that conversation, I will leave that to you. I think you should definitely know when the time is right. However, I would personally advise that you have that conversation before you tie the knot and make things official. The what are our money goals conversation. Mm -hmm. Now this is where both of you need to go in depth about you know, what your personal financial goals are, how you intend to spend your money, what you want to do. Because at that point, you will learn a little more about your partner and how they spend their money. Don't forget, if they have bad spending habits, you will definitely be affected somewhere down the line when you have been saving up to buy something, get yourself out of debt, and the next thing you know, your partner's dipped into that kitty and left you with nothing, all right? So have those conversations. They're really important. Now, for instance, if you are the partner who wants to own a home, naturally, it's going to mean that you're going to have to put a cap 
on your expenditure when it comes to say couple vacations or getaways and your partner should be in a position to understand where you're coming from and align if indeed she is also thinking the same. If you're both looking at owning a home together, when you begin to talk about it in the manner that I have just mentioned and meet your goals quicker, everybody will stay very happy because there are no um, gray areas and everything is just plain black and white. Now take note, it's, it's okay if your financial goals aren't perfectly aligned, okay? Having a conversation like that gives you guys the opportunity to at least know where you both stand and begin to find ways to sort of work yourselves into each other's um, financial plan to have one big master plan that will be a guide for your lives. And finally, I'll say the, how are we going to combine our finances conversation? Now, I know there's some people who will die before they ever open a joint account, maybe due to past experiences that were not so great or just advice from people who have done it before and you know, ended up really messing up their lives because maybe one partner was more of a spendthrift and would take money without the other's permission, et cetera, et cetera. We hear the horror stories of joint accounts all the time. However, if this is someone you really want to spend the rest of your life with, you need to have that conversation. A way to do it would be, yes, to have your personal accounts available, but creating an opportunity to have an account where you both put in resources that can take care of the home. So I know of a couple who, for instance, have agreed to allocate a certain percentage of their income every month into what they call the pool account or the joint account. So in the joint account, these are monies that are used to take care of the home, pay rent if they don't live in their own home or pay the mortgage, utilities, childcare. And then of course they get to keep a certain percentage of their monies for personal stuff. You know, things that they would like to do that they don't necessarily have to come to ask their partner for every single time. And these things can be many. If you want to dip into your own personal kitty and buy a gift for a friend or give money to an extended family member, this is not going to affect the main pool that you guys would have put together to sort of manage your lives financially. Now get this, if you and your partner decide not to have any kind of a joint account, for whatever reason. Don't forget that their bad spending habits are still going to affect you one way or the other. If they are people who are not financially um, frugal or prudent, trust me, over time, they're going to drag not just themselves, but you into a financial um, sinkhole as well. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications, and please share the video. My name is Jessica. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.